season four, episode 16 starts right now. Welcome to the show. I'm Brandon Davis, joined today by Jenna Anderson. Hey, everybody. Jamie Jarek. Good morning. And Aaron Breen. He's back again. Hooray. I don't even know where I've been. I, if you ask me where you've been, I'd be like, I'm not even sure. <laughs> Here, there, everywhere. West Coast, East Coast, cross the... I don't even... No, I wasn't in London this... I don't know. Anyway, I'm here on Phase Zero. I'm happy to be here. You guys have been doing great work. The Alakwa Cox Spotlight episode is out there now. Deadpool 1 got unfairly 8.1 out of 10 when I... That's what happens when I leave the show for too oh long. My, my goodness, you missed one that's show. High. What? That's 8.1? Like I told you, Jamie had the lowest score out of all of us for it. So that was the what? reason. What's throwing me into the bus? <laughs> Listen, 8.1. I, I had thoughts, okay? I'm going to keep them to myself, but I don't agree. I think Deadpool is better than an 8.1. Uh, what else happened while I was gone? CinemaCon, we're going to talk about that today. Uh... X-Men 97 episodes. Woo! I wasn't on last week's episode. What a freaking episode that was. Oh, my God. I'm still crying about it. And then today did nothing to help my tears, really. Uh, but all right. So today's show, we got CinemaCon footage, descriptions, recaps, conversations, all kinds of stuff. Wait a second. Hypothetically, if other people on this show had seen that footage, are they would they be able to talk about it? Hypothetically, no. Oh, so I'm the only one who can... Yeah. Oh, sh yeah, that, that, that's well, then nobody else had definitely on this has seen the footage, but me absolutely, absolutely not. not. It was a hypothetical question and we're moving on. <laughs> um, got an exclusive update about a certain actor who played a mutant once upon a time that I got to interview recently at the Abigail junket that might give away who it is. If you can do some math, mental math there. Uh, I asked them if they're going to be in Deadpool Wolverine. We're going to talk about that. It's going to be on phase zero for the first time. Before it's anywhere else, really only because I haven't had a chance to pull the video yet because uh, I got in at 1 a.m. Uh, X-Men animated series. We got Spicy Nugs going on. Uh, Shang-Chi 2. Loki's yapping his yap. And then we're going to talk about <laughs> X-Men 97 at the end of the show. Full spoilers for today's new episode. So you know the drill. If you don't want to hear about that, if you want to wait till you see the episode, come back later. Um, but all right. All right. Everybody ready to talk about CinemaCon? I will say people are wanting us to give a spoiler warning when we talk about certain footage. So we should probably spoiler warning. <laughs> We're going to talk about certain footage. <laughs> Richard, put it on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the line. So here's what here's here's like a more thorough spoiler warning. They showed about 10 minutes of Deadpool and Wolverine footage, and they showed about 10 minutes of Captain America Brave New World. That is an estimate. I don't know how much they actually showed. It was something in that ballpark of each movie, as well as the Deadpool and Wolverine, Jamie Jarak, Taylor made movie theater, put your phone away, PSA, which is going to play in theaters. So this is about seemingly 10 minutes from the beginning of both of the movies. If you want to know nothing, come back in 10 minutes. We'll be done with this. Uh, if you don't mind hearing about the footage, Stay where you are. You're in the right place. Uh, okay, so CinemaCon kicked off Monday. All kinds of stuff. Lionsgate, Paramount, Disney had the best presentations. Disney brought 75 minutes of footage from various projects. About 20 of those were from Deadpool and Wolverine and Captain America Brave New World. Shocking that they showed off Captain America Brave New World. Let's be honest. We were all kind of not expecting that. Uh, but they did. Quick summary of Deadpool and Wolverine. We have a whole podcast episode really going into detail about this. Like, I... I Shared as much as I could remember. I got home like one in the morning. I recorded this episode, dropped as much as I could. So if you want like full details, go there. I will spare you of the spoilers. Uh, but the PSA kicked off the Disney presentation, loaded with F words. Deadpool and Wolverine walking through a tunnel. A phone goes off. Deadpool's talking about Secret Wars. Phone goes off. Wolverine looks into the camera, pushes Deadpool out of the way. He's like, hey, bub, turn your phone off. You're in a fucking movie theater. And Jamie Jurak was like, that's the best thing I've ever seen, even though she hasn't seen it yet. Definitely hasn't seen it yet. Um, and uh, I don't know. They banter back and forth. Wolverine curses out the audience for their phone going off and Deadpool pops back into frame. And he's like, nice fourth wall break. Didn't know you had that in you. Uh, a full Canadian comes out and then they just march off and talk about Secret Wars some more. 
Uh, and then the footage was just basically Wade Wilson selling cars and having a birthday party. And then what happened? Now? Oh, the TVA comes and gets him. It was basically a longer version of the trailer. Much, much longer version of the trailer. The movie, honestly, it was very funny, but I'm worried this movie's gonna be like exhaustingly funny because it tried really hard to make you laugh with every single thing Ryan Reynolds said, uh, and often worked. But I, I, I was, la I was laughing a lot. Uh, but he gets a new suit. He gets spanked on the butt quite a few times while getting that new suit. Uh, and possible spoiler here, but his swords are the definitely spoiler here. Um, but his swords are like a detail. Um, okay, skip 30 seconds. Go ahead. His swords are made of adamantium now. So this man is probably going to kill a few Wolverines, I'd say. Um, so yeah, that happens. Matthew McFadden is indeed playing Paradox. I don't think it's the real TVA. He is definitely, that Weed Wilson definitely thinks he's Marvel Jesus and he looks in the camera and he goes, suck it, Fox, I'm going to Disneyland. Uh, and then headbutts it and the glass shatters and all this crazy stuff. So that's the short version. Then Captain America, Brave New World. Actually, any thoughts on this? Now that, now that, uh, Jenna, go ahead. Based off of your very good description that we ran on comicbook.com, isn't there also footage from a previous movie that is utilized in a new yes, way? So there's that, yeah, there's Thor the, well, there's a, all, a bunch of Captain America footage, Winter Soldier, uh, like all, Avengers Age of Ultron, a whole bunch of that. But then in one corner of those screens, which we saw in the trailer, there is footage of Thor the Dark World, the scene where Loki is dying. But they replaced Loki with Deadpool. And Deadpool at Wade Wilson asks about that. And Paradox says, oh, don't worry about that. That's way in the future. Well, wait a second now. Where, when are we? Hmm? They also, he says, is this be, he says, like, am I here because I used Cable's time travel thing? Uh, and Paradox says, oh, we know all about your abuse of the timeline. We don't care. That's not why you're here. We want you to like basically save the universe. So, yes. Okay, so, uh, Jamie, having not um, seen the footage. Yes, having not. I do want to shout out BD for the thorough recaps of all this footage because it really, you, you really crush it, especially on that short. You don't have a lot of time to do that. Uh, and mm -hmm. my short-term memory is not great. So I, I never could. In your air apes one, you're like the flowing trees of the breeze. I'm like really get far out of it. But okay. So yeah, I did not see this footage, but if I had seen this footage, uh, I would have the following thoughts. Um, I, uh, I, it sounds very funny, very hilarious, uh, looking great according to BD. I did have one concern and that mm. is the concern that maybe they're making Wolverine a little too much like Deadpool, like the way that he's, uh, that he does curse and certain in that, uh, opening, which of course is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. Please play that at my funeral. But, um, uh, I, I do worry that like they're, they're, putting Hugh Jackman into this weird box of like, you've got to be as crude as possible because you're a Deadpool movie now. And I don't know how that's going to, if that's going to work or if maybe that's, if I'm wrong, if that's not what it's going to be, but that was my only concern. Everything else I thought sounded great. Interesting. That's a good point. Cause Hugh Jackman was cursing a lot in that footage. The, uh, he was barely in the, like the movie footage, but that PSA man was dropping F bombs. Like, Yeah. Nobody's business. Aaron, having also definitely not seen the footage, but reading and hearing reactions and recaps, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I've read a lot of the reaction online, and there's a lot of butts. If you enjoy butt-based humor, I think Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be a, a, a fun thing for you. <laughs> I'm also intrigued by the descriptions of our friend Tom Wamscams as like a absolute, like, King nefarious Tom. figure in in this movie as well people are going to argue about if that's the real tva or not until the moment this thing gets into theater so that, that's fun too um and you know like i love the fact that vd and the other people there said it was so funny because i mean if the humor doesn't land like that would be really kind of crushing but you figured it would be really really funny it's all very encouraging adamantium swords like what Stuff off Haley. Thor the Dark World getting mentioned again for the yeah. third, third time. Um, it, it will so not important. die. It, the, the final battle in Secret War is going to be in, in Thor the Dark World in the background of the movie. That's where we're <laughs> headed. Oh, um, so yeah. Yeah, Daddy's going to be like, meow, meow. 
the whole time. <laughs> Yay! Cat Jennings is Secret Wars confirmed. You hear her first. Uh... <laughs> oh man. Uh, wait. So if if I I well I don't know how to ask this. If Jamie went to uh the movies. D twenty three. If did Aaron, did you go to the movies with Jamie? I did. Okay, I thought so. I wasn't sure. Okay. <laughs> Jenna, you're in Chicago. I know you don't hang out with Jamie and Aaron. So what do you yeah, think of all this? I did not go to the movies with Jamie and Aaron. Um, <laughs> but just based off of your description, like I, I am very my interest is definitely peaked in this movie. I, I do agree with you. Even before hearing about this footage, it did become this thing of like, is are the jokes gonna be too much? Is the humor gonna be trying a little too hard? Mm. And is that going to distract from the story at hand and the character that's at hand. I would love to be proven wrong, but I I don't know. We'll talk about it, especially when we get to our Deadpool 2 episode of like, there's not always success in that regard. Um, but I'm excited. I do love, you didn't mention it, but I love the LA Rams joke that they make about Wolverine yeah. costume. That is very great. So I don't know. I'm optimistic. There I want to add... I, I just want to add, like, somebody in the comments is like, well, Wolverine curses. He curses in, in world class. There's a difference between dropping F-bombs and talking about a specific type of room in your grandma's nursing home that I'm not allowed to say on this podcast. Like, it, it, it's, a diff it's a different type of humor, cursing versus oh. certain things that are said uh, in that intro. Yeah. Like, I grew up in New Jersey. When I'm not on camera, I say... I curse just, it's just like, I think a lot of people, especially now that I live in Nashville, they're like, oh, well, bless his little heart for all those <laughs> words. But to me, like, instead of saying, um, or, uh, I'll just be like, in, uh, like, it's like, it's just part of my vocabulary having grown up in Jersey. But so it's, there's ways you could say that, like you could curse and it just seems like natural vocabulary. Then there's what Deadpool's doing with it. And the raunchiness of some of this, I do think it, it like I think exhausting could end up being the word. I think the movie's gonna be hugely entertaining. I'm not I'm not casting doubt on this, but my goodness, there is about seven straight lines that are consecutive jokes about pegging. Uh, I don't know if we can even say that on this show, but I don't know how to describe it other than what it is. It's seven straight like lines of dialogue about the same kind of joke, no, right? When the TVA shows up. Well, yeah, I'm the only Sounds one. Sounds like it, it based nope. off of your recap. <laughs> Yeah, I'm the only We're one who saw it. That's in the it, trailer. Like, that is in the trailer. Yeah, yeah. That, and but that, but it's in the trailer for like a quarter of what it is in the actual footage. Like the jokes go on and on, and it's a, it's a quip fest. And I I mean I was laughing my ass off. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was laughing a ton. And but I, if that's the whole movie, I'm like, man, this might actually be exhaustingly funny. Which I always say it like it's a bad thing. Oh no, I laughed too much. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> I am no less excited. I'm more excited for Deadpool after seeing the footage. Also, I think we're going to get Avengers cameos in this movie. After the footage, it gave me the impression that not only our X character is going to be in it, I really do think we might get some Avengers character cameos. And Aaron's up there like, damn it, BD, you're blowing the expectations through the roof. <laughs> I'm sorry. I kind That's of agree. I what, you what? I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Oh! Kind oh! Of agree. Let's go! I do. Oh, wait. I think, I, I think everything's on the table. Okay, while I was in Vegas, I have to tell a quick story. Go ahead. I was in Vegas for CinemaCon before this presentation, and I get in the elevator, and Chris Hemsworth gets in the elevator with his wife, and this other guy's in the elevator. It's like, guy's got to be like five, six with a little tiny dog with him, and he looks up at Hemsworth, and he goes, hey, man, I think I've seen you on TV before. And Chris Hemsworth goes, no, I think that's my brother. And then the other guy's like, no, you look so familiar. And Chris Hemsworth goes, I don't know, man. I think you're talking about my brother on television. And the guy's like, oh, okay. I don't know. You just look familiar. So we get out of the elevator. We walk out. And I pull that guy to the side because Hemsworth goes one way. Me and the other guy go the other. And I said, bro, that was Thor. He's like, huh? And I was like, like Marvel? Thor? That was Thor. He's like, oh, my God. And he turns around to like, go find him. He was already gone. <laughs> Yo. Oh my god. I do love the I, response to that as my brother because his brother yeah. he's not on it's TV. True, brother, that's really it's funny. On TV. That's really but I, funny. I was when he said it, I thought of Loki. I, I I knew he was talking about Luke Hemsworth and kind of making a joke with this guy because he didn't want to say, Yeah, man, I'm Thor. But I was like, damn, that what a moment this was. Um that's anyway, amazing. Captain America Brave New World also showed footage of CinemaCon. Really blew me away. I'm not gonna lie. And as I said in the full description, that is a much longer video with a lot more details than we're gonna give on today's show. Uh, it, it, 
I, I don't know if the whole, if this means the whole movie is going to be good. I get that. I'm getting excited off of 10 minutes, 10 great minutes of footage, whatever it was. Uh, I don't really know what the story of the film is, but I, what I saw, if the movie is this good, we're in for a treat with Brave New World. Very Winter Soldier tone, very gritty kick-ass, like just the cinematography of it lines up with that of Winter Soldier and some of those Civil War scenes like when they were in the bunker. Harrison Ford doesn't have a mustache as Ross. They make a joke about it. It's very Iron Man 2 recasting type bit. Uh, um, but the but the uh, Isaiah Bradley stuff where he gets that Winter Soldier kind of treatment when the music comes on in this room, starts killing a bunch of world or trying to kill a bunch of world leaders and bodyguards and stuff. It was awesome. I genuinely thought this footage was awesome. So, Aaron, you've read descriptions of the footage. You definitely haven't seen it. But, you know, what do you think of Brave New World having learned a bit about it? I will say that I talked to Dorian Parks from uh, Geese Color yesterday. Mm -hmm. We were at lunch and I asked Lovely. him and he's like, it looks more expensive than Falconer Soldier. The money is apparently on the screen a little bit more. It's shot really beautifully, like, you know, those sort of things. And I'm so happy for Carl Lovely to actually get to do things. Um, that sounds tremendous. After having lost a lot of great, like, you know, like uh, Louis Gossett or like, you know, Carl Weathers and the, the, not seeing them get their big, like another big moment in the sun besides, uh, of course, the Mandalorian love for, alum, I mean, for Weathers, but still like that sounds great. And just having mm -hmm. Sam in any capacity afterwards sounds delightful. It's been, it feels like it's been 86 years, but that's every week of my life now. <laughs> um, I will say me and Doria both were like, why there's some sort of, like he said, there was some sort of conflict men mentioned in another part of the world that Joaquin and, and Sam yeah, went to they, go they handle and they tiptoe around this. it, Yeah, you know? So I'm, I'm curious. There is some excise stuff that, you know, us over at the other side and Brie D, we all have competing murder boards going on with this movie, but all of it's encouraging. It, it was, it was in, they said, I think they said it was, they were on a mission in Mexico that went well or something before this. And I'm like, what could that be about? I don't really know. I bet the movie starts with it. Whatever it is, I right. bet that's how the movie starts. I think so too. Very much like Falcon and Winter Soldier had that action sequence in the first episode with, you know, that like where they were out on a military mission. I think it's going to be similar to that. And that has now triggered the president to say, I want to rebuild the Avengers, which is not very Thunderbolt Ross of him, which he acknowledges. But that was like, you move over, Deadpool. This is my Marvel Jesus. We are getting the Avengers back. Um... I was yeah, baffled well, reading that detail because now I'm like, what were Carol and Wong and Bruce doing in Shang-Chi then? Was that not the Avengers now? Well, that might have been, but like not the president's Avengers, you know? <laughs> you know, not... not, not they love branding know. in phase four. That's <laughs> yeah. why they put Wyatt out there with, the, with his really punchable mug because yeah. they wanted yeah. there to be a figurehead in it. They, they, need, they got those vault industry statistics going about the superheroes uh, at, over there at the White House. So I don't think you want White House Avengers, but uh, I don't care who's just give me a team and build it. <laughs> um, if you build it, I will come to the movie theaters. Jamie, there was a moment that there was a moment that really confused me, but I, I I like don't know how to say it without. I feel I worry it's like a spoiler, even though it was in the footage that you described that made me question Sam's strengths. I'll say. Oh, he gets tossed. Wow. He gets tossed. Uh, gets yeeted. Yeah, no, that's not what I'm thinking about, though. Uh, he tosses something that made me be like, uh, when you described it, like, how did he do that? Uh, uh, but sure, maybe table? I was just, yeah, maybe I was just reading Wasn't too that much. Wasn't Isaiah? Was it? Didn't Isaiah probably, right. like throw a table at everybody? I think that's what. Maybe. I don't remember who it was. It was a I lot totally happening read really it. fast. I didn't see it, so I, I couldn't oh, be confused. <laughs> right, yeah. Also, Isaiah Bradley went and jumped out a window wow. like uh, like Winter Soldier. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. No, was I stuff. hope it was actually lovely. He's like, let me do this. Let me just do this. <laughs> let me just do it with myself. Let me jump. Let me uh, jump. Well, yeah, so Brave New World showed off great footage. Very out of context footage, so it's hard to even really spoil it. It was action, and they want to rebuild the Avengers. Good stuff. I'm sure a lot of the stuff's gonna be in the trailer. If the rest of the movie is as good as the footage, I think we all agree, based on the description, that 
it's going to be pretty damn good. Uh, real quick, they also updated Fantastic Four. Starts filming in the next couple months, Feige said. Uh, he confirmed the cast that we know. Didn't say anything about a Silver Surfer, but did confirm the core four. Thunderbolts does have an asterisk in the title, and Feige said we're, that that is official, and we're not going to say anything more about it until after the movie comes out. Ooh, brain I have a blast. theory. Oh, I'll go. I just had a Jimmy Let's Neutron moment in my head. Go ahead. Go <laughs> I, ahead. I have a theory. I already wrote about it on the site late, late last week, and like we had already kind of suggested this on the show when the asterisk originally came up in the Florence Pugh video. I think this is ultimately going to end up being a Dark Avengers movie. I think they, mm -hmm. either in the marketing or in the movie itself, this is ultimately going to be the Dark Avengers. To the point you were just making about Ross wanting to reform the Avengers, this might be the avenue in which he does it. Um, and it can be very similar to the way that like Norman Osborn yeah. does it in the comics, just with Val and Ross doing it. Oh, yeah. That's actually exactly where my brain just went right before you said that. Because we're talking about Ross wants to rebuild the Avengers. The White House Avengers would probably be some dark Avengers because they'd be doing some shady U.S. government crap. So I feel like what if after like Foggy might just be pulling one over on us here. And after Brave New World comes out, then they might say Thunderbolts, the dark Avengers. It, it is kind of funny because it's like the way that the Dark Avengers assemble in the comics is a completely different circumstance of like they really try to mirror each Avenger and be like, let's find the villain who can like assume their identity, which you can't really do with this team when it's five people with guns and shields and ghosts. <laughs> like that's literally the entire roster. But I think that there's a way to still do it and have it be like we're we're acting like these are the Avengers uh, that are working on behalf of the government. But in reality, they're doing the black ops stuff that nobody else wants to do. In the comics, like, isn't it because Norman pulls out the toast on the Scroll Queen and he's the yep. one who gets the shot off before <laughs> Mr. Fantastic or Iron Man? Yep. If if something happens and poor Sam is not successful at the end of Brave New Worlds, there 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 could be an avenue for everybody to be like, you know what? We have a different Captain America, and since America, we only know guns, baby. Like they have to all have guns and weird grounded powers because what else are we gonna do? Hmm. yeah i don't know it's it, it's interesting it's fascinating to think about what are we some kind of thunderbolt <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna take a quick one minute break we come back we're gonna talk about shang chi 2 loki season 3 the blob oh uh <laughs> and an x-men 97 animated film and the human torch and kamala khan and then we'll talk about x-men 97 after all that great opportunity to subscribe to the channel see you in a moment Welcome back to Phase Zero, the news portion of the show. Shang-Chi 2 update. I promise it's happening, says Simu Liu on threads. And that's all we get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I mean, who we come like, I don't, I, what do you say? There's not much more. Comic-Con, Comic maybe they'll say something. Who knows? I think Comic-Con, we're getting a big update. Hey, Kevin, let me host. Uh, <laughs> other than that, I don't think we're going to hear about Shang-Chi 2 uh, before that. No, I don't think so. Moving on. <laughs> so what we have heard about is uh, Tom Hiddleston went on Jimmy Kimmel. And as Beatty said, he yapped about Loki and his future. Um, he said, I don't know. I really don't know. I know that we've reached some sort of narrative conclusion with season two, which feels very satisfying to me. So I know there was a lot of speculation. There were like reports running last week that were like, Loki season three is happening. And it's like his his comments definitely don't suggest that in any sort of way. How do you guys feel about it? I mean, we'll obviously see Tom Hiddleston again. I don't know if we're getting Loki season three, though. No. Yeah, we talked sure. about this last week. I feel like it, I don't think like, we all agreed, like probably not. And I think that's fine. Hmm. I think he might be in Deadpool, though. Well, here's the thing. Tom Hiddleston is one of the actors who really loves playing the character and never says yeah. those comments like, oh, I, you know, I've played it for 10 years. I'm over it. I want to do artsy fartsy. A I love A24. I'm just <laughs> I'm just making jokes. But you never hear Tom Hiddleston say, I want to do other things. I feel too busy with Marvel. You hear Tom Hiddleston say, I love this character. I love Loki. This has changed my life. I'm so grateful for this part. Is I'm the most charismatic person in the world, and I love playing him. The best fans. Uh, and you're like, oh, my God, we love you, Tom. Please never stop. And he's like, 
<laughs> and it's like, damn, Tom, we love you, bro. So I think Tom Hiddleston back as Loki is inevitable. He enjoys playing this part. He loves the character of Loki. He's never given us an impression that he's like trying to hang it up. So I definitely think Marvel would be crazy not to use him. And I, as perfect of an ending as Loki season two was, I do think he'll be back probably as soon as Deadpool. I love that we got a new impression in BD's lexicon. <laughs> If only I had those insane blue eyes. I'd be further along in my career if I had those. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> oh, no. Tom Hiddleston, you perfect son of a gun. Uh, Kevin Durant. I interviewed him re uh, ye yesterday for the blog. No. Jesus. Uh, yesterday, I was in L.A. for the Abigail Junket. Phenomenal movie, by the way. Fantastic horror film. Not even a horror guy. Had an absolute blast with this movie kevin durand is in the film he's very good in it kevin durand played not only kimi on lost his most iconic role but also played the blob in was it origins it was origins right yeah we just watched it yeah so i asked him about it. i don't have the full quote because i haven't even pulled the video yet but we'll have this clip on phase zero later today and on comicbook.com little exclusive coming to the pod right now uh, i asked him i said kevin we're on the road to Deadpool and Wolverine at comic book. So everybody who's ever played a mutant, I'm obligated to ask them or I just immediately get fired. So will you be playing the blob again? And he said, actually, he was supposed to come back to play the blob in the Wolverine and be a sumo wrestler in Japan. Like Hugh Jackman told him all the stuff. They were going to do that. He was going to be a sumo wrestler as the blob. And it never ended up happening. So he was like, in regards to Deadpool and Wolverine, I should come back. And he was like, he said he like sound like he wants to. Maybe he is. Clearly, Hugh Jackman had plans for him once upon a time. He was going to be a sumo wrestler. So maybe, uh, maybe the blob makes a return. I thought he died though. They did technically because we talked about this in our apocalypse episode. They show they recast him for apocalypse. I forget who played him, but it was a completely different actor, and he was fighting uh, Warren in the early scenes of that movie so like they could find it's also it's the fox universe they could find a way to bring him back i also True. love how at the start of the show you were like i talked to someone on abigail who played a mutant and like that isn't just kevin durand it's also dan stevens and i was that, like imagine was... if imagine if legion somehow was incorporated into deadpool and wolverine i would astral plane out of my body i, I would 100 percent thought... thought that's what he was talking about i was like dan stevens what and then i was like oh yeah i forgot about the blob You'll relate to this pain. I got I, it was Dan Stevens and Catherine Newton together for that interview. Uh, and at the end, I was like, man, which one do I ask a Marvel question to? And at the end, I asked, I think it was like three questions in the four minute interview, maybe four questions, whatever it was. And I said, all right, well, I got to end it with this. My last question. Then the person in the back stood up and said, sorry, that's all we have time for. No. And I was like, that's totally cool. I flew four hours to be here. I totally get it good we could not possibly go 30 seconds over for the headline that would actually move the needle mm. but that's fine i'll i'll see myself out god i hate them that, that happens sucks. i get it they're doing the, and, and they actually the junket went on super smoothly so i get it they got to end those interviews on time because if i don't know if they run a minute late it's the end of the world but it is what it is uh so i didn't get any marvel questions with Catherine newton or dan stevens i was going to throw the legion question though um but i think you got to ask something like that uh at CinemaCon, but i don't remember uh, anyway uh all right aaron what you got for us okay we've got more mutant madness with uh, x-men 97 possibly getting an animated movie uh chase conley one of the directors talked to inverse along with jake castarena uh and the fans have been absolutely legion much to jenna's delight about their love for x-men 97 uh Conley said if they get a chance to do an animated movie, first off, it would be a slam dunk. I think there would absolutely be something the audience would want to see and we would want to be a part of. And then Jake added, I think myself and the entire team would love to keep doing this. Seven seasons in a movie. Let's go. If the love and the demand is there from the fandom and Marvel wants to let us do it, it'd be great to bring these X-Men, these characters, this style, and this work to the silver screen. Anybody up for X-Men the Animated Series, the movie, the sequel, the franchise. I don't it would be it. wild. 
I love how we all talked at the same time. It would be yeah. wild just to have the communal experience of like getting to watch one of these stories with a large group of people because even just watching these episodes in the morning and the amount of like hooting and hollering I'm doing, like if if they had that amount of surprises in a movie, like I I would be hyped. I don't necessarily want to overwork the team involved. Like I want them to tell the story they want to tell, but if that were to <laughs> include a movie, that'd be great. Damn. Nope. No part of me believes that if this were to happen, it would get released in theaters. I, I truly do not believe that if they made an X-Men 97 movie, it would get a theatrical release. I, I would love it if that happened, but I, I just don't foresee it happening, sadly. I'm going to be honest, I don't need it. I know. Negative Nancy. <laughs> I just I think the show's great. I love the weekly format. I think these have I think the animation is great. In the rest of these quotes, they talk about how more time will lead to better animation and stuff like that. I am happy with the animation. I understand. I'm sure the people in the trenches working on this show understand maybe there's some corners you have to cut to meet deadlines and stuff like that. So I totally get that, wanting to make like the absolute best thing with more time. But I love the weekly format. I love the extended, the long-form storytelling that we get with this. Maybe after a few seasons, I'll feel differently if they want to do like a culminating event, but I'd rather just have a culminating final season. That's just me. That yeah. said, Jenna made a good point with the theatrical experience with the communal experience that is just unmatched you can't beat that but i don't know i'm enjoying this the way we're getting it personally bd when we were in the theater me and jamie were there for the like the premiere event thing and that theme music hit in front of a room of 400 people who are all like very very about the x-men it, it, i'm like wow wow the vibes outside are bad but in this place <laughs> things are good things are chill <laughs> things make sense special. um just well, the Nicole Kidman intro. Yes. <laughs> if the Regal Opry Mills in Nashville can bring that energy, I'll, I'm there. But I don't know if if that's that that's that's that premiere energy, you know? Yeah. I yeah. Tell if I, and, uh, for, uh, given our jobs, we would probably be fortunate enough that most most of us would be able to go watch it in that environment, which would be an absolute treat. We're very spoiled. That said, I do I am just thrilled with the show we're getting as we're getting it. It's true. I just remember being in the crowd for uh like Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F like a couple like that be almost a decade ago now in Cleveland, Ohio, and it was raucous in there. And I was like, "What is <laughs> happening? Did I sneak into a, like a wrestling event? What is going on? We're yelling stuff like it's, <laughs> it was having a good time." So I don't know, but also there's no chance Feige gives you an animated X Men movie before we get live action. There's no way. Yeah. No uh, chance. BD is right. We made it 35 minutes without a wrestling reference. Jamie, Jenna, are you guys proud? Yes. <laughs> Live your truth. <laughs> All right, Jamie. Hit All us right, with it. Move, moving on. Uh, Joseph Quinn talked to Entertainment Weekly about admiring Chris Evans' Human Torch. He said, I re remember really enjoying Chris Evans' performance as Johnny in the previous films, and it felt like this would be a really exciting opportunity. I, I ap was absolutely signed up. Um, and then about whether Evans' version of the character was on his mind when he auditioned, no. I mean, you're going to make it your own. It's big boots to fill. Uh, yeah. Jamie's cut out for a second, so she'll be she'll be back with us in a moment. Uh, I can't. Oh, Jamie's back. Did I finish the quote at least? You did. Yeah. Okay. Great. You did. Big boots to fill. Great. Have to share yeah. your thoughts. <laughs> oh, Batman almost just shared his thoughts. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you. Should, I don't think you should try to emulate Chris Evans. That's my thoughts. Good stuff, Joseph Quinn. I like him already. And I like Chris Evans. I don't know. I don't know what to say about this one. I'm excited that he's excited. And I love the kind of classic costume. We talked about it when the poster dropped on 4-4. Like, I, his enthusiasm is clear. And that is going to go really, really far for me. I think it's weird to even think about whether or not he tried to emulate Chris Evans. But I, like, I think it's a clever way to ask a Human Torch question to Joseph Quinn by EW at like we all go into we know what it's like to go into these interviews and understand what the hot topic is but also you understand like hey so tell me about human torch and when you start filming or what your what your character is going to be like just gets shut down so you have to find that like you know way to find something that can be talked about and this was a good way to do it um yeah i mean i'm excited he's excited too 
I mean, he's been the one to talk the most about Fantastic Four out of all of them. So yes, keep putting a microphone in front of, in front of Jessica Quinn. Like, like <laughs> yeah. let him talk about it because Jesus, we're gonna have more updates from him than like Feige or you know poor poor Matt Shackman or anybody else because we can't find them. And Pedro's too busy like saving a small child somewhere. So I was gonna say once Pedro is on like oh, five other press tours, mm -hmm. then we'll get a lot of quotes from him. But like in the interim, we have nothing. <laughs> Pedro's on the golf course by now. Nice. For sure. Oof. He's who I want to hear talk about it, though. I want to hear yeah. him talk about this. But... Adventures in the group chat with the Fantastic Four yeah. featuring Pedro Pascal. <laughs> um, um, all right. All right. Do we have? Are we? What do we, we have? Got one next? more story. Yeah, we do. Do you, you guys want me to do this one? Yeah, go for it. Oh, boy. All right. Oh, boy. So fun times to talk about air dead drama that is just stuff. Um, so. We had some comments this week from uh, I said I want to get his first name right, Jenna. Mm -hmm. It's it's not it's not Zeb Wells. It's somebody else, right? Cody Ziegler was Cody the one Ziegler. Who said okay, his comments. Yeah. right, right. And he was talking to the amazing Spider Talk podcast about Kamala Khan's death in uh, the comics. Of course, a big topic among comics readers. Very traumatic. Kind of doesn't make ton of sense except for synergy reasons he told their podcast that well wells told me months before the plan which was kevin feige was like hey i don't do this very often but can you please do something to make this in line with marvel because we have some stuff we want to do with kamala so wells was like f word i'm the bad guy that drew the short straw people are going to be very mad that i have to kill miss marvel right um so she for those who don't know she died in amazing spider-man not even in miss marvel but in amazing spider-man and then was resurrected as a mutant because she's a mutant on, in the tv shows and the movies and it makes sense and you know uh there, there's all sorts of other weird conversation around kamala we can never just have a normal conversation about a Vellani or brie larson or a town of paris or any woman can never have a normal conversation um Marvel was approached for comment to io9. They said this is not the case. It was a decision solely on editorial grounds before it had been in the works for months. I have this here cover of a Captain Marvel issue printed by them. Uh, I think that's from, is this from before she, yeah, I think it's before she died. I, time is a, is a weird construct. I don't remember <laughs> any months. I don't remember any days. I, I I was I was in CinemaCon with BD apparently. I was there. <laughs> um Yeah, so what do you guys think? You think that this is a synergy thing or you think this was going to happen all mm -hmm. along? I think that there I think that there might have been synergy to want to make her a mutant. I talked about this at length both like online on the website and whatever that like there were probably other ways to make her a mutant that didn't involve fridging her. Um I don't mind that we ultimately got to where we got. Aman co-writing her comic has been an absolutely delightful experience and like I'm glad that that is the end product. I just hate that we had to get there the way that we did. So I I don't doubt that the truth is probably somewhere in the middle of it might have been partially a synergy thing to help get her closer to how she is on the screen, but then also killing her off might have been an editorial decision. You never know in these right. circumstances. Like there are so many editorial stories over the years where like one person believes one thing, where one person believes something else, and you just kind of have to leave it at that. It's not uh, unprecedented probably. either, right? Like, isn't this why uh, Wanda and Pietro aren't Magneto's kids anymore? Like mm -hmm. it's yeah. Sometimes the studios get involved. Uh, but I also believe that a more like make her a mutant somehow is probably more likely than kill her and then make her a mutant. I, I That seems like that was just, uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't, we'll see. I don't, I don't know. Kevin Feige walked in there with a shake and was like, do the job. <laughs> do the job, son. <laughs> I think uh, I think it's definitely synergy. I think it just happens so often where the comics start to mirror the movies, um, either slightly before a movie comes out or afterwards. I think it's just they they think, and I think they probably properly think this that the movies drive interest in comics, and they try to capitalize on that. I think there's a lot of there's a ton of people who watch superhero movies that don't read comics, but there's not maybe any but definitely very few people who read comics but don't watch superhero movies so i think they try to get that large portion of people that watch movies but don't read comics interested 
by saying, oh, you like that thing about the movie? Well, here's kind of a continuation of that story in comics, by the way. Even though it's not a continuation of that story, they kind of try to entice you that way. So def- I think it's in- the-, the means of it. Well, I don't know why they went about it the way they did, but uh, she's a mutant and we're not surprised. Yeah, I, I, I'd be more inclined to believe all this hook, line, sinker stuff about like, oh, it was totally his decision. If mutants didn't die every five seconds in Marvel, they die that every two true. seconds. <laughs> It was just the circumstances of it were so weird because she was barely in Amazing Spider-Man. Like she was a supporting, supporting character yes. in the narrative that they were telling. And then they bring her back into the fold and kill her off very unceremoniously. Like it was just the optics of how she died and not the reason why she died and then was reborn a mutant. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right. Time for our last break today. So this is your great opportunity to subscribe to our channel. Check back into that work meeting you haven't been listening to. Uh, and uh, you got 60 seconds to do so, and we'll be right back. Phase Zero resumes now. This is our X-Men 97 episode six portion of the show. Oh, my God, we're already in episode six. We got like three more episodes of X-Men left. What in the actual F? That makes the- me sad. I hate God. that this era is going to be over. I actually just realized that. Oh, God. Make it stop. There's only 259 days left in the year. What, where, what are you doing with 2024? I'm not doing much. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, X-Men 97. Reactions all around. Real quick. Uh, this is spoilers for the show. We're not going to do Jamie recap. This is weekly episode. There, We're just going to do reactions, and then we'll do quickly, you know, do, do our thing where we discuss the episode in detail. Jamie, you're at the top of the screen. What did you think of today's episode of X-Men 97? Life, Death, Part 2. That was great. Certainly, like, not as good as last week, but they can't all be like that, right? It's a TV show, and and we need to remember that, but it was still a great what it was episode some of the animation mm-hmm. in this one especially was really blow me away it got a little scary what i i it's i love whenever storm is faced with a small space uh because it happened so much in the original series that it kind of became a joke to me and so i got so excited i was like yeah claustrophobia storm coming in so uh, <laughs> i i had a good time Aaron, it seems pretty good that you didn't watch this one right next to jamie yeah <laughs> you, who, yeah my arms are safe. I need to. I need to rest up for Deadpool. Yeah. You know. <laughs> All right, Aaron, you're on the big screen. What do you? Uh, what do you think of today's episode? I mean, this is our household has been waiting for this. Like Ari, Ari was like, my wife was very, very sad at the end of the last one, but she's like, well, also wear a storm, like wear a storm. <laughs> like let's not forget what's going on here. So it's nice to check up on her. Uh, also, hilariously, as BD said uh, in one of our meetings, you do not. Um, put Ross Marquand into something and not have him talk. So it's fun to have him back and get a check in on what's going on there out there in the, among the stars with a bunch of fun comics cameos for people to like, Oh my goodness, what is happening? Like these interactions that you would never get in the live action versions of this, uh, of this story. So that's fun. Um, I, I love the, I love the modern suit too. I'm big, big fan of headdress storm. Uh, a lot of uh, fans of my experience want to be free of the shackles of uh, the Mohawk. They are not as huge fans of it. So that's that's fun as well. I mean, I I, I do think that it's not going to have the same sort of wow, oh my God, impact of episode five, because how could it? But it does serve a lot of purposes and moving things forward. And if you're familiar with the uh, X-Men lore and, uh, you know, there's no Magneto and no Charles, at least not yet. He's got to take his time to get there. Uh, there's another candidate to lead the X-Men now, which is fun, which is interesting. Jenna, what do you think? I, I loved this episode. I agree. Like, episode five is so climactic. There is just so much going on to it. I, I f- It feels unfair to compare everything else afterwards to it. But I still think for what this is, this accomplishes more in 35 minutes than like some superhero movies I've seen and like a lot of episodes of other superhero television. I loved the way that they weaved in and out of the two narratives. I had just assumed pressing play this morning that it was just going to be the Storm and Forge stuff. And I was delighted by what we got as kind of the B plot of the episode. Um, And I just think like there were so many interesting character moments having Storm go through that big kind of tribunal, having the claustrophobia. I also kind of had that reaction, not as animated as Jamie, but still. Um, I I loved it. I thought it, it accomplished a lot in a very short amount of time. Yeah. I thought it was really good too. I'm with you guys. Uh, I love the storm stuff. I've been finding the storm and forge uh, story to be really interesting. 
And then as yeah, I've, I've been waiting for Professor X to come back. I've been like, there's no way you cast Ross Marquand for just that one little cameo with Morph in the beginning in the first episode. Well, I think we all kind of suspected he would come back. I actually just this week had an argument with Joe Deckelmeyer from Screen Rant and Rachel Leishman from Mary Sue, and they were like, Professor X is dead. And I was like, bet. And they owe me an <laughs> apology. So uh, I'm still confused about why they've been saying he's dead when the series ends with him not dead. He's like in a coma and they're like, you can only be protected over here. I'll never, I just, I'm still confused as why they've been calling him dead. Aaron. Yeah. Jenna? I have had the same question. What? Jenna. You, I mean, you... Aaron, no, you go ahead. Uh, both of us are like, no, 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 you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> in the Krakoa era, they have the technology to basically heal a lot of what ails humanity. And when the humans figure that out, they flip their stuff. And if the humans realize the Shi'ar could come in there and improve everybody's life and make Charles walk again and do all this stuff, it would probably complicate us a little bit. We can't even handle the mutants. So I think they just lied to the rest of humanity to, to spare them, to spare the inevitable you lied to us conflict that's coming now. Because he'll walk and back also, in there all going. I also think like the team itself like doesn't necessarily assume that he got with the Shi'ar and was magically healed. Like they, they might assume that he like died on the way or it didn't work or whatever. Like this is the 90s. Technology is still kind of limited and like their understanding of it's kind of limited. So like <laughs> Scott being sad at that Charles <laughs> is presumably dead. Like, I mean, yeah. Cousin Blast coming out of their eyes and they're reading each other's minds. Oh, it's okay. Like they're still in the, for the nineties. Like I, I get, I don't know. Like I can justify it. I, I almost do wish there is like more of a canonical explanation of the show. But shit. You know, <laughs> I just this is also Scott's reaction that we're talking about because he is the one who had like the most vocal reaction to Charles being dead. So I, you kind of have to take everything with a grain of salt because he's very dramatic. I'm just I, trying to. Felt- I I I uh, I no I get all your points, but yeah. I do also I, I watched that last episode of X Men the Animated Series where it was very clear this man was very much alive, just floating out into space, and everybody was like, "All right, bye, Charles, wish you the best." <laughs> and now all of a sudden we check back in with them, and they're like, "He's dead." <laughs> uh, I'm just imagining Cyclops explaining to Jubilee that Charles lives on a farm now, and that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, we now know he's alive. He refused to wipe his memories. Uh, he said, fine, I'll forget Earth. Fine, I'll forget forget my X-Men. Oh, you've oh. gone too far. That's You've gone too far now. So he's his love of Eric, his love of Eric brought him back. He said, I, no, 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 no. I'm still, this, this is a Jamie Jirak special right now. I love Don't Eric. think I didn't say something out loud when that when he said, <laughs> but I don't want to forget Magnus. I bet you don't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I bet you don't, buddy. I bet you don't. So I did find it interesting that Mag- there was no follow-up on the Magneto and Gambit of it all. Nope. I did find it interesting that they are remo- they are they are Glenn under the dumpster in the credits. They are removed from the opening credits. Nightcrawler is added. It also seemed like Nightcrawler was uh, dead. I thought Nightcrawler died. No. Didn't he die last week? He portaled out of the way. And he was like roughed up, but he like looks up in horror after oh, he sees. Oh yeah, no, I thought I okay, yeah, no, Nightcrawler survived. That's my bad. Um, but yeah, Nightcrawler's in the credits. Gambit and Magneto went the way of Stephen Young in season six of the Walking, season five of the Walking Dead, when he was under that dumpster and they tried to trick us. I think this is the same thing. I don't think they're actually gone. Like, oh please, <laughs> it would be better storytelling if they're dead. Let's be honest, stakes are important, but. These steaks ain't cooking all the way through. Like these are, there's no way they're gone. Am I uh, right? No, I, but it, I, it's I, I, Jamie. Go ahead. Again, we're we're all on top of each other today. Yeah. I did. All I'm gonna say is I don't think Magneto is dead anyway. I, I don't think Magneto died. I think because we didn't see his body. I do think Gambit is dead, but I also think he's gonna get cabled and come back. But that's mm. that's my feeling but i do agree that death is important in shows like this uh mm-hmm. but they're but it's x-men come on hey, i think Gambit. particularly with the x-men they utilize death in such a way of like it's more just about the absence and not about like the actual death of like if you take someone off of the proverbial chessboard what does that look like for the rest of the team that's left and so i think we're going to still explore that 
but they're not going to really be dead. It's also, this is what I love about television storytelling of like, we did this with Life Death, where we kind of like had part one, then we had a filler episode, not involving that story arc at all. And then we went back. And I love that we're kind of doing that now with the end of episode five of like, you have to wait and really see how it ends. And I think that that was the right call. Torres 88 says, I think they're as dead as Gamora and the original Groot. Er, I think it's er, a close comparison to what I think is going to happen. I think it's like Thanos in mm -hmm. Endgame. Yeah. Where they killed him in the beginning of Endgame and then 2014 Thanos shows up. Like, I think we're going to kind of see that. I, I also, I mean, I think we're going to see that timeline kind of not happen. Like, I think Cable is going to prevent it. Cable was there. He's like, I'm sorry, Mama. And then uh, I think he's going to fix things i don't think gambit is dead um all right what else we got from this episode we have the Green. ronin and ronin, ronin yeah. <laughs> with a very similar hammer uh yeah the there Korean was a ronin. lot of like mcu kind of synergy because like them saying terran so often felt very yep. much them mm -hmm. like kind of borrowing that from the mcu and then we Forge got the imperial guard which was great. We, oh yeah, well, let's talk about Forge because well, that his power I think left out of Doctor my Strange, you know, they looked yeah. very MCUified. Yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, I was so confused got... at the magic looking like that and the portals not being square. I was like, <laughs> geometry, it matters. <laughs> <laughs> I was glad that they justified that it's not necessarily Sorcerer Supreme magic. Like it might just be similar because otherwise I could only imagine like the YouTube explainers and the theory is trying to connect the two more literally. <laughs> but I think that it, it just there. That was an aesthetic touch. Yeah. Yeah. You want to rattle off the Imperial Guard there? Yeah, so we got Gladiator, uh, Starbolt, mm -hmm. Flashfire, Smasher, Titan, Warstar, Manta, and Vulcan. I, like, leapt out of my chair when Gladiator showed up. I, like, like I said, I fully expected this to just be the Storm and Forge episode. And so getting the Imperial Guard and just seeing them animated in this new way was very exciting. This is, this, this episode feels like the first episode where you might be a little lost if you didn't watch the, an the animated series before the full thing before this. Yeah, like people are like, who the hell's why did Jenna get excited about Gladiator if they haven't watched it? Uh, but you did, we did. So it's like, and the the Charles stuff, him being up there, the Shiar Empire and stuff is like, we get it, we expected that. But if you didn't, you might be like, what the hell did this show just turn into? Why is Professor X up in this cosmos? What is happening? Uh, so he almost died, and. <laughs> Yeah, just go watch the animated series. There's a whole several seasons that will get you there, uh, which there's only three more weeks of this. So I highly recommend it. I think most people on phase zero. Oh, wait, what? There's 10 episodes? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Never mind. My day just got better. A uh, <laughs> couple of really good lines of dialogue from Storm. I I know you wrote one down. Oh, wait, that was a that I, was a. I wrote down line. a completely different thing. But you, yeah, you talk about your Storm. I love the what are demons, but reflections of our fears and shame line. I thought that was great. Uh, things we bury within us hide from loved ones and even poison and even as they poison our hearts until we finally hear our, our heal our adversary by embracing it. I thought that was a great line. Uh, I think that the, the dialogue in this show in general has been really well written, but that what are demons, but reflections of our fears and shame. Also the adversary looked like a studio Ghibli like villain. And yes. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Like very, very much so. I want to shout out Allison Seeley Smith because she not only voiced Storm, but she voiced the adversary. And yeah, that was wow. pretty rad. Because uh, I was like, who is that? And I stayed through the credits and I was like, oh, cool. Way to go. Way to talk to yourself, girl. It's so cool like to make it like a scene. literal manifestation mm -hmm. of her anxieties. Like that was the perfect way to do it. Genius. Um, my line of dialogue that I wrote down, I technically have two I want to talk about, but I wrote down because I, I love that in a roundabout way, they proved that uh, Charles is a Simpsons fan because he quoted uh, the quiet parts out loud when he was talking with the Shi'ar about like the whole tribunal and everything. And that line originated in an episode of The Simpsons two years before the events of this episode. So that just kind of was delightful to me of like that phrase just randomly came up. It feels the same way that like Kamala Khan uses in Big In and that kind of initially originated from the simpsons um and then i have to talk about i'm sure jamie has thoughts about this too um the whole line about barking <laughs> with charles and with lalandra i about like what? almost uh because he was talking about they they were being introduced and it was like here's queen like, lalandra and her, her consort. consort and he was like oh they, they make it sound like i'm your pet maybe that's not such a bad idea and just like their whole exchange, I almost had to pause the TV because I was laughing so hard. Like, I, I love that they worked a line of dialogue like that into the show. It's an interesting dynamic for sure. 
Yeah. Oh, I'm not going to comment. So <laughs> many jokes. Job. The jokes. The jokes are writing themselves. Yeah. They are. The jo- oh, Charles is into some stuff. Uh, whew, what else we got here today? Where do we <laughs> think this is going? Where do right, let's let's talk? Let's let's get. None of us have insights. Nope. None of us have seen anything. Where it's all fair game. What are we thinking is going to happen? I think Cable's going to kind of save the day a bit. Obviously, I think Charles is going to go back to Earth. He's probably going to be like, "Oh no, shambles." Uh, and I-, I think a lot of Episode Five gets undone. But I think that that's not like that's probably going to have crazy consequences that are going to set up Season Two. I think Magneto's alive and he's going to wreak havoc and his days leading the X-Men are already over, which kind of makes me <laughs> sad because I really enjoyed that little arc. But I think that uh, Magneto was right and he's about to raise hell is what I think. Scott, I, like, I think you have something. Well, because uh, I know we, we wrote about it on the site. They did put out a Magneto is right poster on like the show's official social media. And like, if you know the comics, what Jamie is saying basically is what happens tied to that of like, he kind of transcends into a very specific kind of public figure for the mutants. So I, I will be very curious if they go down that storyline. I think we didn't even talk about like the Mr. Sinister stuff at the end of the episode. I think that that's going to be a huge portion. I'm still curious if Cassandra Nova is still going to be tied to this in any way, or if it just is Mr sinister but like either way jake said I don't get too the... excited about that yeah go ahead jamie i was just saying, yeah i i wrote that up for the site that he said that don't don't hold out for cassandra nova he said that's not happening i want to say like so sinister was behind gnosha is that what this ending implies Seemingly. Yeah, which one, like, you know, I love Sinister, you know, that's my boy. But I was also like slightly disappointed because I did think it was going to be someone we hadn't seen yet this season. And it was like, oh, we saw him already. Okay, so it's just he's still the villain, which is, again, fine. I was just expecting a surprise. Could still get Apocalypse tied into this somehow. I'm just throwing stuff out there. It, it, it seems as though as well, like, you know. There, there are some teases out on ye old internet that uh, a, a human mutant conflict would bring some other heroes into the mix who might have some things to say about mutants trying to, you know, get their get their get their lick back, as it were, uh, after this fight started. BD looking super pensive. Yeah. It's BD. It's all connected. It is all connected. I asked Jake about that tease from the uh, teaser, and he said, "You know, there's no mistake in what that what, what that shield is. You know, yeah, interesting. I mean, Spider Man was referenced in the first episode and has cameoed in this show before. Well, the old version of the show, yeah, the original version. I mean, well, I I feel like these final episodes are really going to ramp up, and we're going to get a lot of uh, like I I don't think episode five is where the show peaked. It might be." Yeah. But I have faith that they're going to blow us away even more and not just by throwing a bunch of characters in there. I really think this story is a pressure cooker and it is like that was one of the releases, but it didn't release to zero. And now it's going to build back up in a big way where Sinister is now going to have have much more to do with the story going forward. You now have the Shi'ar out there seemingly kind of pissed off. Charles is coming back and I do think Charles versus Magneto is going to be very interesting I really like Jamie's theory that Magneto is alive and he's like, you know what? I tried to be nice. I tried to be nice. You know what? It'll be interesting because Sinister is behind all this that like, I don't know. How is the, how are, how are the people that Magneto warned going to react? But I don't, listen, I need sleep. I don't, I don't know. I gotta watch Do we want to rate the episode? Times. I'm at like an 8.7 out of 10. Okay. That was pretty damn good. I mean, obviously, it's hard to follow last week's, and maybe if this wasn't after last week's, I might even go higher than that. But I thought this was a really good episode. The Forge and Storm stuff was fantastic. The adversary looked and was genius. I think the the having the same person voice both was just a brilliant move. And then I thought the Xavier stuff with all the Marvel cameos and all the characters and that whole storyline and the stakes of, oh, was he actually going to agree to forget his whole Earth life and the Terran life? Was great. I'm at eight point seven. So BD, you agree? 
You agree that an eight score is a really high score for something to get. <laughs> uh, hold the phone. Deadpool, though, would get. You're crazy. You're crazy. Actually, you think you know what? As a matter of fact, I am lowering mine to an 8.5 now because I think Deadpool <laughs> would be. Deadpool, the movie, was better than this episode. So now, yeah, uh -huh. I'm at an 8.5. Wow. I didn't take my hand off the piece. I can move it back. It's like playing Charles. Me, me and Jamie are Eric and Charles. I don't know who's yeah. who, but we're just playing chess all the time. <laughs> one day we're gonna. One day we're gonna have to do uh, a phase zero. Like we'll all be together and we'll all play a board game, and y'all oh. will see the real Jamie. Y'all oh, will no. see. Y'all oh, will no. just gonna stream. <laughs> Uh, all right, Jamie, what do you, where do you got this? Where do you have this episode? Um, I think it's a really good episode. I think it's better than Deadpool. I'll give it a nine. <laughs> Deadpool living rent free in your head. Jenna. <laughs> I, like Deadpool. I, I was going to say I'm at like a nine out of 10 as well. I think okay. that it's not as unbelievable as some of the other episodes, but there is still so much that I thoroughly enjoyed out of it. What a what a comparison! Deadpool is a seven out of ten for me. She Hulk is better. Where did that come from? Well, they both break. Oh, they're both fourth wall yeah. breakers. Trust okay. me, when well, we yeah. when we were talking about Deadpool, a lot of the comments did bring up She Hulk and the fourth wall. Oh, uh, so. okay, okay, yeah. Um, Aaron, uh, I'm thinking that it it's probably like an eight point two somewhere around there. I want to leave a lot of space because I'm enjoying all of them so much that if something really knocks me on my butt, I want to yeah. be able to give it a nine or ten. Um and I might have added the two back that Brandon subtracted because it's a funny bit. <laughs> I want to point out all in the game saying Deadpool two is going to get savaged by everyone that's not PD. And I do think all in the game is onto something. Uh all of our scores combined amount to an 8.67, so an 8.7 out of 10. I think Aaron made a really good point. We are ranking it kind of high, and if something amazing does come along, we will be like, oh, shoot, maybe we gave that episode a little bit of a high score. But I get, but hey, we just got to go with our – got to rate it from the hearts, people, okay? That's what happens. 10 scores, the way things are meant to be scored here on Phase Zero, 8.7 out of 10 because, we, because, you know, public school taught me round up when it's above the five, so 8.7 <laughs> out of 10. Uh, all right. Any last words for today's show? Jenna Anderson. It's at, Hey, it's Jenna Lynn on social media. Um, I got to interview Chase Conley and Emmy Naman Yanamura, who are the episodic directors of X-Men 97. The chat was so much fun. Um, I already started running spin outs from that interview and we're going to have the full interview on the YouTube channel very soon. Um, and as always go read some comics, go read the work of Trina Robbins who passed away this past week. She is such an instrumental person in the world of just having women in comics and talking about comics. So go check out her work. Jamie Jurek. Um, uh, Aaron, I want you to tell Ari that the first thing I thought of in this episode was, I uh, bet uh, I need to see Ari in that Halloween costume uh, at the next Halloween oh, party. Uh, oh, so you man. pass that on? Because that was my first thought. Um, listen to Wolverine. Don't take your phones out during the movie. Follow me on Letterboxd at Jamie Jurek. Aaron Perrine. Oh man, but Jamie's out here encouraging my wife to just go Halloween shopping. All this, and she will do it. it it's a real how half the house is really, really about that. Uh, it's at Summer Lake Corner on Twitter. Um, <laughs> go watch Jenna's interview with the other directors. Go watch me talk to Jake and ask me ask him why they decided to break everybody's hearts in episode five. And apparently, Gambit was not the first choice for who was going to die in episode five. You'll have to watch the interview and figure out who else it was supposed Ooh. to be. Mm. Oh, that's mm. a good tease right there. Mm -hmm. That's a good tease. You're a professional, Aaron. That's right. Uh, all right. That's our show, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, subscribe to the Phase Zero channel. Watch comicbook.com. Read comicbook.com. Do all the things we need you to do to help us pay the bills. We work hard. We appreciate you guys. We hope it's entertaining. We hope it's informative. Play our show for your mom. Play it for your dog. Leave a five star review and uh, have a wonderful, wonderful, lovely weekend. We are watching Logan this weekend for Monday's road to Deadpool and Wolverine recap. So that's the movie you need to put your feast, your eyeballs on. It's all rated. Bring your kids. No, don't. I don't know what I'm supposed to say about that. Maybe nothing. <laughs> Bye everyone.